They're rebels with a cause, a grassroots movement where volunteer filmmakers create professional films for nonprofit groups absolutely free of charge. Washington Full Circle starts right now. Hi, I'm Furman Patterson and welcome to Washington Full Circle. Audience has seen the power of documentary filmmaking from major directors like Ken Burns and Michael Moore. But here in D.C., a small band of professional filmmakers is creating powerful short stories on behalf of nonprofits and social causes. Here's an example. So we are at Kenilworth Marsh, we're at Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens, and we are looking at a wetland restoration plot that we're working on. So we have about 15 plots where we're planting native wetland plants that are gonna help filter the water, create habitat, so help restore the entire ecosystem. These students are from the WILL program, so it's a year-long leadership program. They're from high schools in the D.C. area, and so they are doing a community service day here with us. It can go a little bit, above, like about this high on it, okay? We can go like an inch or two up, because that's going to make sure that it doesn't um, float away with the tide, okay? This program is called the Wilderness Leadership Program, and it's a nonprofit organization that focuses on making us aware of our environment. I'm beginning to understand life better and my environment. Like, I was scared of the little caterpillars and stuff at first, but just embracing them more, you know, just respecting their environment as well. A lot of people haven't been out there in the mud and knee deep mud, so that's definitely an experience. So, getting people out there and then getting our hands dirty. The river is not as clean as we want it to be, but this every plant that we put in there is going to help filter out some more of the pollution, so every little bit helps. The organization behind that piece is called Stone Soup Films. Joining us is Liz Norton, the group's director and founder. Also with us is Aaron Essenmacher, president of Women in Film and Video of Washington, D.C., a membership organization that supports women in all areas of this industry. Thanks both to both of you for joining us today. So happy to be here. Yeah, me too. Uh, Thanks for having us. And I'll start first with you, the name Stone Soup <laughs> Films. I'm wondering, where does that come from? Well, there is a famous old folktale, uh, and you know the short version of it is that um, you know soldiers are going from town to town and they can't get fed, and then they have this magic stone, and then they realize through this sleight of hand that if they get everybody in the village to contribute what they have in their personal garden, <laughs> um, then the whole village can feast on a soup that they otherwise couldn't have had on their own. So we use this philosophy. Um, it's, the, it's almost exactly what we do. We have editors and cameramen and animators and graphic designers and composers and everybody puts in their own skill set in order to be able to produce a professional quality film and donate that to the nonprofit. And Erin, uh, that's part of, uh, she described some of the people that are part of Women in Film and Video in D.C. Uh, give us a, a little background about what your organization does. Sure. Well, I should start by saying we actually have 20% men in our membership, so uh. we don't just support women, but um, it started 35 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, <laughs> we, we love men too. Um, it started, uh, we've started 35 years ago. We're actually in our 35th anniversary year, and it started with a group of women who really saw a disparity between sort of men and women in terms of opportunities for women in the business. I think thankfully we've seen some of those gaps close and so some of the focus has um, shifted a little bit more to helping um, media makers in general in the DC region that sort of cut across multiple disciplines. So um, I, I really think one of the powers of WIF is the diversity of folks we have in our membership. So I mean diversity in terms of where people are in their careers, students all the way up to uh, women who have owned businesses in this community for 45 years that are media makers, um, and then every facet of the creative sort of process. So writers, producers, directors, camera people, makeup artists, costumers, writers, you know, more technical fields, photographers, 
I mean, you name it. So, um, and then we still do advocacy on behalf of women. So we're always looking, for example, to get uh, women directed films on the National Film Registry. So we mm -hmm. do do some advocacy work to continue the, to raise the profile of women in media. I think we all know that the, the, those, those sort of above the line positions, producers, so, directors, especially in Hollywood, are still women are still woefully underrepresented. So that's definitely still part of our mission. But in terms of who we support in DC, it's uh, it's much more inclusive. So Liz, how do you uh, select from that group people to be uh, in your group to make these films Well, for it's actually funny. Uh, the connection is very tight between mm -hmm. our organizations and Melissa Houghton, who's the director of WIF, has been an amazing resource. Um, but uh, it's funny. I think we kind of dovetail uh, each other. Um, I moved here from the, I cut my teeth in the production world in New York, and when I moved to Washington, um, I had a big chip on my shoulder and I was like, oh, this is just, you know, it's going to be terrible and there's not going to be any other filmmakers. And I was so wrong. I was completely wrong. And I initially met with uh, Women Film and Video and I said, I have this crazy idea for this nonprofit. You know how the pro bono legal community has really leveraged the power of lawyers? Like, can't we leverage the power of people in the creative industries to benefit the places, the, the nonprofits and the organizations where we live? And she said, great. I mean, I could have been, you know, I, she didn't know me from anyone. And this this organization, Women Film Video and DC in general, is I think everyone's just kind of pulling together. Um, we're, we're interested in supporting the work of, um, of people who work in a pretty isolated industry. Um, you know, like we're pretty much fanned out. There's no central location. And you can be working anywhere from your kitchen to, you know, a, a studio. Um, but w what happens is, is that there's this energy uh, mm -hmm. together. So we advertise. So w you asked me about how we find people. Some of our people have come from Women in Film and Video. Actually, initially, a lot of our people came from Idealist.org, mm -hmm. which is this people seeking nonprofit work. So it's a really kind of funny correlation, because we consider ourselves a service organization first and a film production company second. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't do the work without people who have those skills. Mm -hmm. So um, we advertise our uh, volunteer roster on Women in Film and Video, and we, um, we, con we have classes and master classes and skills workshops that we use for them, and it's great. Hold, hold that thought, there's more to talk okay. about. Uh, we'll be right back with more of Stone Soup's signature program called Doc in a Day. We'll show you what we mean when we come back. I just love the movement, the actual ability that you can actually master your own body and manipulate it the way you want to. It's not like any other athletic sport that you do. In breaking, you you have to have, like literally have control over each and every single one of your muscles in your body. Come out, please, come down. It teaches them discipline and it keeps them fit. It shows them a way to express themselves in a positive way as opposed to a negative way. Whip, okay? That's how you get warmed up for your power. You practice your whip. It helps me escape what's bad about the world, and you know, it helps me focus on what's good, what I can improve, you know? It helps me improve myself. It helps me stand out from people instead of being a common thing, you know? Where beats in life is home. It's a place where you feel accepted. Our mission here at Words, Beats, and Life is to transform individual lives and whole communities using hip-hop culture through the presentation, the teaching, and the convening of communities around hip-hop. The Academy is an after-school program that uses hip-hop as the vehicle for positive youth development. So the Academy, we teach all of the four core elements of hip-hop. So we have DJing, graffiti, breakdancing, and emceeing, and then we also teach chess and spoken word. We're all about deconstructing the negative stereotypes and stigmas commonly associated with the music and the culture. We can show them that, you know, hip-hop is something that you can use every day. It's not just a creative outlet. Hip-hop can be instrumental to you taking a test. 
hip hop can be the voice in your head rapping to you that you need to persevere through this difficult time in your life. Hip hop is the way that you can have discussions that you may feel uncomfortable about and you don't want to address. And sometimes this art gives our students an opportunity to tackle difficult subjects. Words be to life, they help me with a lot of things. Painting, it helps me with my emotions. I get out anger, or if I'm really excited, I just paint and I have fun. I think what it, what it means to me is really it's a form to express yourself and also it's not just you know drawn in a notebook or just in a gallery where no one can see it or you have to pay to go see it. It's kind of out in the open and I, that really appeals to me. What I've seen develop is young people's confidence. They see themselves as artists and they get supported as artists. So we give them the tools and the resources that a professional artist needs. With a couple dollars, you can help fuel the dreams of our students to be better people, to be better artists, to be more involved with the community, to be advocates for their neighborhood. Words Beats in Life is just about presenting that. It's about showing the world that hip hop has the capacity for good. It is a tool of social change. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys. We're back with Liz Norton, director of Stone Soup Films, and Aaron Essenmacher, president of Women in Film and Video. So Doc's in a day. It's so How's amazing. I mean, that piece you just saw was made in a weekend, you know, with we send out, we have almost 500 volunteers on our roster, which wow. is incredible. I mean, those are 500 people who are not only in the creative field, but are engaged in their community. And we t send out teams and we make five films in a weekend and they shoot on Saturday and they cut on Sunday and we provide them snacks and they stay up <laughs> late. And it's just a different types of a, a way to engage you in a nonprofit mm -hmm. that we might not be able to do a full on partnership. Because sometimes our engagements, if, if you are a, a, you know, a food pantry and you're trying to expand your medical clinic and you're trying to raise funds for your medical clinic, that's a mm -hmm. different kind of obstacle. So we'll right. partner with an organization for four to six months you know, to really show the story of the evolution of that clinic. But Doc in a Day is a perfect way to take a fantastic organization like Words Beats and just give a little glimpse into what their program is and then they can then use that on Twitter and Facebook and send it out to their funders and all these people to try to engage a new audience in what they're doing. How, how much preparation goes into to doing that? You say, okay, you've got your staff that you're gonna have for that weekend, but prior to that. Oh, for Doc in a Day? Yes. Um, you know, it's it's run, our supervising producer uh, runs the whole program. It's a lot of puzzle pieces in play. Sure. We, there's a whole selection <laughs> process for the organizations. It's a little bit competitive. You know, mm -hmm. people are obviously there's. I mean, we can't even begin to meet the need of our applications. So yeah. we try to at least give them a little something. Um, and so Doc and Day is a great way to engage. So you have to provide teams. Each team has to have at least one camera person, one editor, and one producer type mm -hmm. person or someone who feels like they can take that on. Um, it has to be intelligently done and strategic strategically done, mm -hmm. so there has to be a conversation with that organization to say, you know, people think you're just a rec program, but you're really doing meaning, meaningful things with kids after right. school, and um, and then it has to have a heart, you know, if, if, sure. if you're not making an emotional connection, then it's not working. So yeah. it's, it's a terrific way to leverage the talent in the city. Now talking about meaningful things with kids, uh, what Women in Film and Video does uh, has some programs that deal with education and with children. Yeah, so we have a program called Image Makers, mm -hmm. it um, is a little, it's not quite in a day, we usually do it over six weekends typically um, and we both we have two sets of a selection process one is we go out to local nonprofits um, much like Stone Soup um, does mm -hmm. in do an application process in terms of you know who we're gonna work with we typically pick about three um, and then we work with uh, local high school kids and we try to start with schools and areas where they maybe don't have media studies programs in the schools mm -hmm. maybe that's been cut because of you know budget issues or other things um, and really provide uh, mentoring for them so Liz has come in actually as, as a mentor we work with professionals in the community, camera people, editors, producers that come in in these intensive day-long um, workshops over, again, a, a series of six weekends, and the kids um, learn how to make their own media, and it culminates in a 30-second uh, PSA for each of these nonprofits. So it both is teaching local youth how to make media and kind of creating that pipeline of our next generation of media makers and supporting local nonprofits at the same time. Uh, we'll talk more about that in and, and just a second. But up next, more on our conversation with representatives of DC's film and video industry when Washington Full Circle returns. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to our conversation on DC's film and video industry. Now, Aaron, uh, tell us about this annual event that Women in Film and, and Video puts on, the gala, uh, and what that's all about. So we um, have a, an award that we give out every year called the Women in Vision Award. And mm -hmm. in the past, um, we've done a big sort of gala event around that. We've actually sort of shifted gears and we started last um, August, we honored Penny Marshall actually. And we've really looked at kind of creating um, a more of an educational event around the pre presentation of that award. Um, so last year, uh, going back to the whole advocacy piece, we had advocated for um, a League of Their Own, which was directed by Penny Marshall, a woman-directed film, to make it into the uh, historic, uh, the registry of, uh, film, National Film Registry, Before sorry. You, go, you have to explain who Penny Marshall is. At for really? Those okay, yeah. Penny Marshall, Laverne and Shirley, yeah, that, look at their that's own. What I really? Want you to say. Am I that old? Okay. <laughs> um, Penny Marshall is a famous actress and now director, daughter of Gary Marshall, who's also a famous director. Um, you should just look her up on IMDb if you don't know who she is. Anybody She's very there? funny. <laughs> She's oh, hysterical. Yeah, She's still hysterical. <laughs> um, yeah, my sister and I grew up on Laverne and Shirley, so I was totally starstruck. <laughs> but we did this great event where instead of doing a traditional gala, we actually screened a league of their own. Um, we actually brought in some of the original women ball players that the movie was based wow. on for a panel discussion with her. Um, so it was a really cool event and it was a little bit more than just get dressed up, come have dinner, get an award. It actually really reinforced that issue of women you know, breaking barriers in all kinds of, of arenas, you know, mm -hmm. both sports and media. So it was really a kind of a nice celebration. Right. Um, and it's always about networking, which I guess helps with you with what you do is that networking with these people that you may need for the next production. Right. I mean, I never would have anticipated when I started the organization that we would be such a clearinghouse for people who need, uh, you know, any mm -hmm. kind of job. And they call up and they say, you know, we're doing a shoot on Capitol Hill. Do you know someone? I'm like, yeah, I know a lot of people. So it's a really nice give and take um, mm -hmm. within the model. Uh, it is. It's really, it's really, it works really, really well. Now, give me an idea of what the feedback is from the nonprofit. We've been talking about the nonprofits, but when you do one of these amazing films for, for them, right. what happens? Well, it's so interesting. Um, it really varies. Uh, for the longer engagements that we do, um, we're trying to help them overcome some kind of communications obstacle. Mm -hmm. So in our opinion, the success is that obstacle has been overcome. So that might be actually a bump in fundraising, which is always great, and nonprofits are always yeah. looking for ways to <laughs> increase their funding. And we have many, many examples of organizations that have raised $250,000 more than they did the year before in the year that they had the film. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, we'd like to take full credit for that, but obviously they're doing good work, but we're helping them. And mm -hmm. it's a, we, we call it capacity building. We're trying to help them be more independent and also be able to tell their stories on their own after we come out. You know, right. it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a very important engagement and storytelling is very buzzy now, but it's actually critical to connecting people to what you're doing. So another organization, uh, for example, um, Hope House DC, which was mm -hmm. started by mm -hmm. Carol Fennelly, who's just an institution in Washington who was, um, um, started this program to reconnect children with their incarcerated fathers uh, and to say that there's something salvageable about that relationship. We mm -hmm. say these fathers are absent, but in fact, even though they're in prison, they're not dead. Mm -hmm. So is there a value? And she was getting enormous pushback from people that she was trying to get mm -hmm. funding from to say, oh, the kids have no business being in the prison, these guys aren't good role models, whatever. So our mandate was to go in there. We filmed inside ex inside the prison wow. for a couple days. We showed the relationship. I mean, I challenge you to not be very moved mm -hmm. by the piece. And what it enabled them was to show, you're wrong. There is a value in this relationship. And she's been using it to try to get other prison systems to adopt the program. It's been very successful with wardens and others to be able to allow those programs in their prison in a way that she was not able to do before she had the ability to show it. Wow. That's so cool. Now, Women in Film and Video has been, of course, very successful in what you do. But you're part of a larger organization. Is that right, of more national or global? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we have chapters um, all over the country. New York has a very strong chapter, um, as does LA. Mm -hmm. But there are chapters in Texas. Um, Maryland has a chapter, Virginia. So there's chapters all over. And we're also part of an international um, group, Women in Film and Television International. Um, they have an annual summit where we bring in, you know, it's been in the U.S. the last two years, but we bring in um, filmmakers from all over the globe. And so it's great because even when, you know, our filmmakers go abroad to international film festivals, which happens quite frequently, it's great to be able to sort of email ahead and create a little um, network within a network of people that you can visit with and have a familiar face. Um, even if you're at Rotterdam or, you know, you know in uh, Amsterdam or other places showing mm -hmm. your work. 
Now I understand also that Women in Film and Video has a rotating, uh, pres is it president or chairman of the, the group that for every few years or so there's a Yeah, meeting? so uh, this is my second year as president. Mm -hmm. um, typically the president serves um, now for two, a two year term, one to mm -hmm. two year term, it depends. Um, so my term will be up in June mm -hmm. um, and we're yeah. in the works <laughs> now to figure out who's going who's gonna to take the helm after me. But. Right. Now, uh, let's go back to the, the children, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or I should say youth, mm -hmm. uh, in your programs. Uh, are they always the volunteers? Is it always just professional filmmakers, or sometimes you just children that you bring on to the uh, okay. set to train them as you make these things? So this is a wide range. Yeah. Uh, the vast majority of our volunteers are people who have some skills mm -hmm. already. They're either professionals in the field or they're film students. Right. Um, we don't, we, because of the sometimes very sensitive nature of our work, we often don't engage people under 18 because it's just not, uh, it's not appropriate. Um, but we're really excited because there's a, there's a lot of mentorship that happens between an experienced producer and a film student or someone coming, just coming out of film school. We have a very robust internship program and they're getting to know how to make this type of media. You know, DC's been called DocuWood. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's sort of the new capital. And I think there's a lot of job opportunities for kids here Absolutely. and for people in the industry. And it's just getting, it's just getting more, uh, more like, you know, it's rosier mm -hmm. picture as the days go by. So we're really excited about that and capitalizing on that to benefit the nonprofit community. And quickly, uh, where can people learn more about uh, your organization? Oh, well, uh, we're, our Twitter handle is at StoneSoupDC. You can go to www.stonesoupfilms.org uh, or find us on Facebook. We'd love to have you join us. And, and we're, we're, we're at WIF.org, W-I-F-B.org. We also um, are on Facebook, same name, and uh, Twitter, same. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. We've Thank covered you. a lot today. That's it for today's show. Thanks so much for joining Washington Full Circle. I'm Furman Patterson. Have a great day, and we'll see you again next time.